Hi, welcome to Linux channel. See, recently I shot uh, a video episode on uh, VPN uh, uh, stack architecture and uh, you know various uh, you know VPN uh, you know virtual network interfaces uh, uh, you may use as a part of your uh, you know VPN uh, stack architecture. See, this is not a video about uh, how. Uh, you use this uh, you know commercial vpns it is about a video meant for again uh, network uh, software architects who uh, work in uh, building any um, uh, you know uh, appliances network appliances using any existing vpn stack or they may end up uh, customizing it fine tuning it or they may do uh, themselves from scratch uh, using various uh, you know uh, tools available in a Linux environment such as you have uh, uh, you know Tantap and uh, you know things like that so as an example in that episode uh, which I covered uh, around a month ago I am going to attach this uh, uh, video link in the <laughs> description see this is about uh, various uh, samples we can take like IPsec we can take uh, WireGuard OpenVPN and stuff and uh, it depends on the VPN uh, architecture you know they may use a different uh, you know virtual uh, network interfaces which is uh, you know provided in the linux kernel say for example uh, in the case of wireguard they have done their own uh, virtual network interface uh, driver so in the case of wireguard you get a port name as wg0 and stuff like that whereas if you use like v10 and stuff you may get like you know a ton tap interface same thing with open vpn and stuff so that's what i essentially covered with various live examples and uh, kernel walkthrough and stuff so this video i'm going to discuss about uh, you know the encapsulation or uh, uh, the overhead network overhead as you use any you know vpn uh, framework see where this is helpful is if you are building any sd wan uh, architecture or if you are doing any you know uh, uh, stn stuff uh, with some sort of vpn and uh, things like that again you know you can evaluate or in any other case for some reason you are doing some sort of cloud connect and stuff again through some encrypted channel and it may look like vpn and stuff so in any of these cases in case if you do such you know tunneling then you should have a mechanism to evaluate the overall uh, you know overhead of that network see one of the problems is you need to uh, cut short your uh, mtu uh, of this tunnel so that it is going inside our main uh, network you know channel say for example the ethernet uh, interface is 1500 uh, this is interface is going to be less than that and it is going into that you know main ethernet uh, in a port and eventually goes into the internet actually so such things are also uh, qualify as an overhead so you get lot of you know you get of course uh, you know packet uh, fragmentation uh, especially this mtu sized packets if the packets are very small uh, then it is fine even after you add the vpn header uh, you know you don't need to fragment them but in case if the packet itself is you know near mtu uh, such as 1400 bytes or you know something like 1450 or you know exactly mtu sized packets 1500 bytes then in that case uh, you need to uh, you know fragment them uh, because the tunnel mtu is much you know lesser than the uh, actual uh, you know mtu so even this contributes an overhead but the most important thing you should not forget is uh, the VPN header architecture itself. So I thought I can do a quick, you know, uh, you know, demo or walkthrough, uh, such as in a case like you know WireGuard, which I was, uh, you know, evaluating. I have captured few packets, and I thought, uh, you know, I can show, and we can take this as a case study. But in case you use uh, any GRE tunnels or IPsec or open vpn you can do the similar approach over there in case if you are evaluating any sort of performance overheads and uh, you know um, 
he want to fine tune the network performance see this is not a big deal if you have a traditional uh, uh, wired van <laughs> but uh, since i do quite often uh, work with lte networks especially multi van lte networks uh, and these days of course i am working on uh, 5g uh, multi van uh, uh, networks uh, of course one advantage with 5g is uh, you can uh, start with 50 mbps 30 mbps quite comfortably even uh, more than 100 mbps and stuff so there it's not a big deal but the moment you get back to 4g uh, traditional lte speeds uh, then uh, the performance mostly it will depend on uh, your you know vpn overhead also it's just not the service data you send it is this encapsulation takes up some amount of you know uh, chunk and uh, uh, and combined with the keep alive of your vpn tunnel combined with you know Uh, the empty stuff it is going to affect the overall performance okay so hence you come here uh, you can see generally i typed wire card encapsulation uh, of you know sample packets i tried uh, you know getting any uh, p caps of uh, wire card i was not getting anyway i did it in my own uh, system and i captured few you know uh, packet captures so in this i found one interesting link i found this and uh, this is an article uh, let me go to that article and i'm going to again attach this link in this uh, video description this is quite an old article you can see building an encrypted travel wifi router it's an interesting article uh, this is published in uh, 2016 you can see there august 2016 and you can see the author have mentioned what is the requirement and what is the topology and what is the hardware you have and then uh, he architected how we want to address that and uh, all the configuration details and then you can see also this encapsulation stuff of course there is a minor uh, you know missing detail here is after the ip address you need to put this udp header which is actually missing here so if you want to if we want to correct this picture we have to you know see in this way actually so so let's imagine this is the picture the author have put uh, only thing it needs is a correction over here after the ip header we need to include uh, the udp header which it is actually missing okay so you can include udp header okay now it all makes sense right so you include the udp header and then you have the wire guard header and then you have the wire guard encrypted you know packet which is this red box and within this you have again the ip before and then the transport to tcp udp or icmp and its payload over here so essentially that's what you get so after that you have this transport which is this header so this can be obviously your uh, icmp or tcp or udp and its app data over here and of course the whole thing is a payload for your ip header hence this picture is fine but here again uh, here alone it is missing is this uh, you know udp header because wireguard you can you know send it via udp so that's what so we can compare this picture with a live capture so this is the capture which i took uh, i'll open it in wireshark wireshark overhead wireguard sample yeah i was uh, doing some tests and uh, you can see these are some of the sample packets and uh, so we can open any of this and uh, you should able to find uh, this is done in the wireguard port itself so when you capture it inside the wireguard port it doesn't show the wireguard uh, encapsulation this is showing only the service data okay what i meant service data is the data which is actually like customer data which is actually meant to carry inside the tunnel okay that's what is the service data so hence it is not going to show the outside encapsulation so what you are seeing here is technically this stuff okay this you know enter stuff put inside this red box unencrypted and that is what inside the wg0 port and if i do uh, if i open the other one uh, wireguard and overhead sample 
so this is the outside one and uh, this you can see this includes the wire guard packets okay and you can see there uh, you have this wire guard port 518.20 this is the default port and uh, you can see there so you can see there you have the L2 header and then you have the IPv4 header and then you have the UDP so it is uh, 20 plus 2 this is the outside uh, you know headers uh, which constitutes these things actually okay so which constitutes this IP header and this UDP header and then next is that WireGuard header. See WireGuard header, please note if you notice here, this will look somewhat similar to your typical SSL traffic, okay. You get your HTTPS normal, uh, you know, encrypted browsing traffic. So that's how this even is going to look like. So we skip this handshake and stuff and we jump on to the actual, uh, you know, service uh, data carrying packets. So any of this, if you pick, you get it over here see what in this test i was doing is i was just uh, keeping an ideal system uh, most of the times it is going to exchange only keep alive and also there is a client uh, linux machine which is this linux uh, vm connected to that uh, wireguard uh, you know uh, router uh, configured router so if anything the operating system sends anything else uh, to the public internet only those packets are captured so i'm not essentially sending any data and uh, testing over here okay so that's what it is so if you see here you have this udp header and then the wireguard protocol uh, let me little zoom uh, yeah so hope you can see